I want to briefly share with you um, the, I call it that our tourism after COVID-19 has arisen out of the ashes. We were the worst hit sector around the world. But we are resilient and we're fighting back and we're coming back. In South Africa, for the first eight months uh, of 2023, we received 6.1 million visitors, a growth of more than 50% compared to 2022. So that is definitely a reason to, to celebrate and then in my full press statement are uh, outlined exactly what we have done to achieve that, even though I feel it's not enough yet. That we need to push to reach the 10 million mark by March 2024. That would be our pre-COVID figures of 2019. And we couldn't have done this alone. Government cannot do it alone. We did it together with the private sector. And I want to thank the private sector from South Africa, from around the world, for working together with us to grow tourism. But then we also had to look at other blocks, stumbling blocks within the value chain. So the first that we tackled was our visa system. Besides the air access, the next important thing for you to come and visit us is it's, it's visas. So we've made great progress. There are about 34 African countries that don't need a visa to come to South Africa. We've got 132 countries around the world where we also have visa waivers. The Americas benefit from it and Europe benefit from it. And we are doing more in terms of our BRICS market. We do have a good visa regime with Brazil and with um, Russia. Already they've got a 90-day visa waiver. And we are now working to include India and, and China all, um, uh, also. So the 132 countries currently that we have we are negotiating with another 10 to even increase that. In terms of air access, we are still not receiving the number of flights that we, we received before COVID. But we were on our way and achieving that. Just last week, our own airlines, South African Airlines, launched a direct flight between Cape Town and Johannesburg to Sao Paulo. We've seen uh, Air China coming back, and we've seen many airlines, airlines from the United Kingdom, from the United States of America. So we are slowly recovering there. And we have now reached out to WTTC to assist us to improve air travel access within the continent of Africa. It's very difficult to travel and we've got 17 countries that have agreed to collaborate and with the help of WTTC, we're going to make it happen as fast as possible. So the details of all the floods, you, I mean, all the flights you will find in there. There are also the concern around safety. Now, yes, 99.9% .9 of tourists visiting our country go back home safely and they tell a good story but we do acknowledge like any other country in the world there are some hot spots and we are now alerting all our tourists using working together with the private sector with the hotels there are just certain spots anywhere in the world where at certain times you just don't go there but again, in a partnership with the private sector, from government side, we invested 174 million. From the private sector, they invested in a digital application, an app 
that visitors can download when they come into South Africa. The private sector launched a 24-hour operational center. So the details of this application is available on, on the website where you can see all the benefits that this partnership around safety is giving to us. Now, I'm always warning South Africans, we have received many accolades. Just this morning, the one, the country with, that made the most progress around sustainability. And there are many others. Our, our UK rep here, Ian, will tell you also about all of the awards that we have uh, received. Because our country, South Africa, is a destination to more than 3,000 adventure activities, including the world's highest bungee jump. I've done it once. I won't repeat it again. And then we've got shark cages, we've got skydiving, we've got beautiful scenery, beautiful coastline. So we are, as we, as we recover within the sector, we also adding new uh, uh, tourism products to South Africa. One of our restaurants just recently in Spain won the most sustainable restaurant in the world. So when it comes to sustainability, we are really trying together with our partners to do as best as we can. South Africa is also a destination value for, I mean, value for money. Yes, of course, you get your value for your money because of the excellent service that we can provide. The warm, welcoming people of South Africa, it's our biggest asset. But then of course also, the exchange rate is really good for international travels, especially from the UK and from the US. So the last few points that I want to make is that if we want to build a sustainable world, you need that collaboration. But we also from government decided that it's best to incentivize the tourism sector to go green. And therefore, we invest millions every year to retrofit guest houses, hotels, with TV solar, uh, with water reduction mechanism. And it's working well because we can also now help the small guest houses. And the reason why we are doing that is because we want our visitors to have an uninterrupted service. Yes, we are having problems with load shedding, and so greening and retrofitting our buildings is, is one of the solutions. We are here at this wonderful world travel market, my first time, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. And I'm looking around here, because what we must not forget that there are many, many new businesses coming into the tourism sector. There are small, medium enterprises that won't have the resources or the money to buy a stand here. And that's why my Department of Tourism, as a, through an incentive, we've got a market access program for small and medium term businesses. To come to fairs like this, to get that exposure to the buyers, to the other exhibitors. And as a department, we will pay for the stand, we pay for the accommodation, we pay for the flight, because we want the smaller businesses also to grow. We don't want them to be small forever. So that's another program that we have. And then let me just lastly deal with some of the new experiences that we are adding to the existing 3,000 that we have. We really want to begin to introduce the world also to our communities, to the different South African cultures, the different South African food that we have. And we want people to experience the real people of, of South Africa. And therefore, through an organization that represents 
all the villages, all the small towns, all of those hidden gems, all of those tourist attractions that the world has never seen before. We want to take you there. So that is our new offering. And therefore we have signed an agreement with Google to help us to Google map, on the Google map, put up all of these new tourist attractions. So there are a lot more to come to South Africa just to see, to go on safari or to see Table Mountain. And I want you to watch the space and see what are the new offerings and the new values that we are bringing in. So, just some of the new uh, investments that we've seen that I'm very excited about because it's the first for Africa. You club, club Med, Tindley, is building the first Club Med resort in South Africa. And we want to thank them for the confidence that they have in investing in South Africa to have the first Club Med opening uh, in 2024. So, of course, um, they are being assisted by the private sector, by the banking sector. So I want to welcome all of you with open arms to our country. Come and experience it for yourself. Those that have been there before when you come back for the second or the third time, we will show you the other offerings that we have, but we accept that the tourism sector in our country is a major contributor to economic growth in our country. So you will be making that contribution. And with those few words, I want to thank all of you. There are a lot more details in the written statement that we have issued, but I'm very happy to be here. And thank you for all of you coming out this afternoon. And God bless. Thank you.